Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Plymouth Church. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. We are delighted to welcome you to this service of lessons and carols as we wait and watch together for all that God has promised. I'd like to ask you to do me a favor here at the start of the service. There is a red-covered friendship pad in each row somewhere near the center aisle. Could you please find that, fill it out, pass it down, read it as it returns? There are green half sheets to tell us about pastoral care concerns, white slips of paper to let us know about prayer requests that you have. Uh, we really rely on you to keep us informed, so thank you for doing that. When this service concludes, we hope that you will stick around. There will be cookies and coffee and hot water and good conversation in Waveland Hall, which is over that away. If you are visiting this morning, I invite you to go out these double doors. Not only will they take you to Waveland Hall, but on the way you will run into our visitor's center, a red and black comma-shaped table where a volunteer will be waiting to greet you, answer any questions you have about Plymouth Church, and give you some free Plymouth Church swag. All of that awaits you out those double doors. Here at Plymouth, we are people with a purpose. We gather to grow in love of God and neighbor. And as you might imagine, we do that in lots of different ways. I want to tell you about some opportunities that are coming up after the first of the year, and then about some things that are a little closer. In 2019, you're going to have some fantastic opportunities to grow in love of God and neighbor through Plymouth Church. For example, on January 10, we are kicking off another round, backed by popular demand, of the Bible, reading the Bible in 90 days. If you do this course, you will journey with a group of people through the entirety of the Bible, starting in January and ending just before Easter. Leanne Stubbs, Lindsey Brown, and some exciting guest presenters will help you understand to get the most out of what you are reading. That begins Thursday, January 10th. In 2019, you may want to get your personal finances in order. If so, you should know that we're starting another round of Financial Peace University. And this is a chance for you to get resources and coaching to really uh, get your house in order. We have very limited space for this offering, and so if you think you might be interested, please sign up sooner rather than later. Don't let that opportunity pass you by. One more for 2019. In February, Jim Antal is going to be here for an event we're calling a Climate Revival, an opportunity for us to think about climate change as people of faith. Some folk will be preparing for that in January by reading his book, and you can take part in that. You can read more about all of these opportunities in the current happenings. Now, just to come a little closer to the present moment. Sometime this morning, I received in my inbox a link to an anti-racism survey being conducted by our anti-racism committee here at Plymouth Church. I would urge you to participate in this survey. The more people click on the link and follow it, the more useful the results will be. Watch for that in your inbox. Now let's talk about the calendar between now and Christmas. You have some truly fantastic opportunities to get the most out of this season. You've already done one of them. You are here for lessons and carols. Good job. You can just cross that off your list. Tomorrow night, there is a very different offering, also well worth your time. We call it the Longest Night Service. It is an opportunity to get in touch with uh, our yearning, our longing, the grief that so many of us feel at this time of year. The music and the rituals and that service will help you uh, if you want to get in touch with that side of the season. Monday, 6 o'clock, in Waveland Hall. And then be aware that on Christmas Eve, you have four opportunities to worship here at Plymouth. 5 o'clock is our family-friendly service that is right here in the sanctuary. 7 o'clock, we're in Waveland Hall with the music of the Saturday Night Band. 
At 9 o'clock, it's the chancel choir back here in the sanctuary, and then the matins choir at 11 o'clock, also in the sanctuary. I attend all four services on Christmas Eve, and all of them are fabulous. So do yourself a favor. Take part in Christmas Eve worship this year here at Plymouth Church. That's a lot, isn't it? Take a breath, because right now, we're about to embark on a journey together. The service of Lessons and Carols reminds us that Christmas has a context, that the baby born in the manger is one part of a much larger story about, about a God who loves us enough to come looking for us. We're going to reflect on that story this morning in scripture and in song. And here's the thing. You have a part to play. This is not a spectator sport. No, when it comes time for you to sing this morning, I invite you, as uh, the Wesley brothers would say, to sing lustily, to really sing. We're going to start doing that together as we remain seated to sing Come thou long expected Jesus. first lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14 through 18. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light. And so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening, and there was morning the first day. God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days, and years. They will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was.
people of God. In Advent, we wait for God to come near. On this third Sunday of Advent, we relight the candles of hope and peace. And this morning, we light the candle of joy as well. As we wait for God to come to us, we are filled with joy, with the expectation that God's promise will soon come to pass, that all shall be well, and that we will have nothing to fear. Today we give thanks for Emily Meharry and Jake Molling as they light for us the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Now, people of God, please rise as you are able in body or in spirit, and let us call one another into worship. When God restored our fortunes, it was like a dream come true. We wait and watch for God. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with shouts of joy. We wait and watch for God. We went out in tears. We will return rejoicing, for God has done great things. We wait and watch for God. Let us worship God. People of God, one of the ways we make room in our hearts for joy in this season 
is by letting go of the things that would spoil it. Envy, annoyances, grudges, petty resentment. We let go by confessing to God just how far we've strayed from the path of joy, trusting that even before we speak, God will meet us with grace. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we recognize and confess that we are not ready for you to come to us. Our hearts have grown distracted and cold. We ignore the cries of the suffering and turn away from neighbors in need. We fail even to yearn for your presence. Merciful one, forgive us and free us for the life that you intend. Stir up our longing for all that you have promised. We ask through Jesus Christ, who loves us and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, hear the good news in the words of Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch-dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us. A son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness, now and forever. People of God, lean into that promise and lift up your voice to rejoice and sing.
This is the third lesson from the book of Luke, the story where angel, the angel Gabriel visits Mary. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one! The Lord is with you! She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Hear me. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David's father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I have never been with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will be with you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who is labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let the baby be with me, just as you have said. And then the angel left her.
This is the fourth lesson from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son. She wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room.
The fifth lesson is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. The angels bring good news to the shepherds. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone round them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wondrous, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to see what Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger.
The sixth lesson is from the book of Matthew, verse one, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Matthew tells of the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus.
This is the seventh lesson taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Wise men follow a star to the baby Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you've, when you've found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star... They were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. They opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In Advent, we say that we are preparing, but what does that mean? And how do we really do that? Well, I can suggest one way this morning. We can prepare by making some space, clearing out some space in our own lives for the one who is already on the way to us. Now, you, know, may, you may not have any gold, frankincense, or myrrh on you this morning. But we share what we have, not because God needs it, but because we need to make room for all that we have been promised. In that spirit, I invite you to join me in prayer. God, we thank you for the love that comes looking for us. And now in gratitude, we offer our gifts May, they use, may you use them to make us and all things new through the ministries of Plymouth Church. And to your name be the glory now and always. Amen.
John unfolds the mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. A light shines in the darkness. And the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But, but those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thank you. 
Christmas is coming. Christ is on the way to us. And as you go from this place today, when you leave this room, if you stop, you listen, you just might hear the strain of angel song proclaiming a world made new. Go out in joy today. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace, now and always. Amen. Amen.